welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Ever is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Welcome back, Soul Family. I am so excited. You're coming back to Make Life Fun. I'm so happy to have you here. Today, I have a treat for you. We have Megan Morin on the podcast today. And Megan, welcome to Make Life Fun. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yay. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and what you are super interested and passionate about right now. Oh my gosh. Yes. So hi everybody. I'm Megan Mm -hmm. and I'm the owner of the mompreneur guide and I am all about helping mompreneurs create movements, go out there, build their authority, spread their mission and their message, but doing it on their terms and in the simplest way possible. Cause as mompreneurs, if you are one who's listening, you know, we have to just streamline things just for our own sanity. And so That is a lot of my focus in my business. I'm actually a third generation mompreneur, which is why I am so passionate about this space because I've just grown up in it my whole life. And I just think it's such an amazing opportunity. So that's the entrepreneur side of my life. The mom side is that I have a three-year-old son, Jack. At the time of this recording, he turns three on Sunday. I have a one and a half year old daughter, Sophia. She turned one and a half yesterday. And then I have my amazing husband, Colin, who is actually a part of our team now. So it is just a whole family affair over here. We're absolutely loving it. We live outside of Cleveland, Ohio in a small town called Sugar and Falls. If I have Gilmore Girl fans listening, I'm like a super fan. We basically live in Stars Hollow. So we are just loving life over here. (laughs) Oh yes. Loving life is what it's all about. Making life fun. So you are in the right place and I'm so excited for us to dive in. So I have a couple questions for you. So you're talking about being an authority and building that authority and streamlining. Mm -hmm. Will you talk to us a little bit more about that and expand on that? For sure. Yeah. I think authority is something that we all need to start with a definition on because it's something that we hear thrown around, but sometimes it feels maybe a little aggressive (laughs) or, you know, we're we're not sure, like, do I want to be that? And so I think first and foremost, the base definition of an authority is somebody that, you know, like, and trust they're seen as an expert and a leader in your space. And the bigger thing though, and I like to talk about a natural authority And really think of them as this bigger picture of what they really do is they create a whole world around them. Mm -hmm. So when we think of like a Joanna Gaines, Mm -hmm. like she's a vibe, she's a whole Mm -hmm. thing. And you just, you see certain things and you think of her and the community around her is a bunch of like-minded people. And you've seen it spread from what started as a blog and then turned into a store and a TV show. And, you know, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Now you see her everywhere. Like she's got something in Sherwin Williams and something in Target. And not to say that like to be an authority, you have to have an empire like that, but you can see how it is similar of creating whole world. And it reminds me of Shonda Rhimes as well. I was Brid- watching Bridgerton binging it. And at the beginning (laughs) of those episodes, every single time, the thing that pops up on the front is Shondaland. And how genius is that? Because she does, she creates a whole world around her because these women and other authorities that we know and love have leaned fully into who they are. They're okay to show up just as they are. They speak directly to you, which then is actually speaking to a bunch of yous. And that's how you get this amazing community around. And they're just really good at being a leader and and being happy with where they are in life. And so that's really, when I talk about authority building, that's the first place that I like to start is like, what is it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Why are we so interested in that? Well, because of course we want to grow a community around us. We are mission-driven mompreneurs. And so we want to go out there and serve and we feel we have a purpose. And so we want to share that. And the other part of that, that streamlining, simplifying Mm -hmm. part is that's all fine and dandy, but Obviously, most of us probably don't have a team the size of Shonda Rhimes or Joanna Gaines. So how can we replicate that same concept 
but in a super simple way. So then we can be present and productive with our families. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that is so important. And I love everything that you're saying about that authority piece, because it is, you want to build that vision for yourself and be known, liked, and trust. And Mm -hmm. so having that authority is sometimes hard for, especially the new mompreneur, right? That is coming out there. That is just breaking out of her shell. That is she doesn't quite know who she is yet. And so when she's hearing you talk about this, she's probably feeling a little overwhelmed right now. Like, oh my gosh. (laughs) And so what would you say yes to that mom who is like, okay, I want to be known, like and trust, and I want to set that authority for myself. Where do I begin? Yeah. So the first thing I would say is deep breath and know that I feel like there comes a point in your journey more around like year three or five, or it doesn't have to have a specific timeline, but it's the point where you feel like, okay, I've gotten through the messy weeds of the beginning of my business. Mm -hmm. Now I've got a better sense of, okay, what in the world am I doing here? Who am I serving? I'm making some money. And so once you have that more stability, then you can breathe and be like, great. Now, how can I put kerosene on this fire? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's something important to think about the whole time that you're running your business. And there's some questions that I'll I'll share with you that you could start to think about to put you in that headspace. But I think just knowing that there's going to come a point where it's going to become easier, just Mm -hmm. like in motherhood, there comes a point when your child gets a little bit older and you could breathe a little bit more. (laughs) So it's the same thing with authority building. It's like, you wouldn't want to be an overnight viral sensation necessarily because you need that runway Mm -hmm. to build up to becoming a bigger name and sharing your message more. So that would be my first bit of insight. Yes. And I love that because it's so true. If you were to boom, there you are. It, that is where I think the overwhelm, like when you were putting that, it painted that image in my head. And so when you think of yourself as I am growing kind of like that flower who's blooming, right? Cause I love mm-hmm. talking about the blooming moms and blooming in your business is that same thing. You have to just start slow and steady and keep that focus and your eye on that prize. Mm -hmm. And as you're getting to that authority building. So I love that answer. So thank you for that. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh. Of course. Yes. And you were speaking earlier that you had four points to Mm -hmm. the authority building and Mm -hmm. I would love to hear them. (laughs) Yes. So I'm going to hit them high level real quick. And then we're going to go back and we'll dig in a little bit deeper so that you can like have some tactical takeaways, but the four main things that authorities do, these people that we know, like, and trust is first and foremost, that alignment piece that I mentioned. They are in alignment and totally understand kind of what they're doing. I'm not saying that this is perfect by any means. I like you agree that I think it ebbs and flows and it's like the seasons we evolve and we change and we learn new things. And so we can grow on top of that. But for the most part, they're in alignment and knowing like, okay, this is why I'm here. I've got a purpose and here is what I'm doing. Kind of like your core mission and message. So the first thing is that alignment piece. The second thing is that they're a vibe. The people that you know, like, and trust have fully leaned into their personality, all the little different connection points and traits about them. And they're cool with it. And they're cool about sharing that. Mm. And I think that's another really important thing. They're, they're no longer worried about the shoulds or having to stay in their lane or go on the other person's path. They're charting their own course. And you see that because that's what makes them so different and what catches your eye with them. And I think sometimes we can get kind of pulled into that sense of, well, I should be doing this or that person's doing that. And that's natural. Like we all, even the authorities do that. Like it's not uncommon, but if we can get out of that more quickly and continue to be ourselves, that's where the people who kind of rise to the the leadership roles end up being. So that would be number two. Number three would be that leadership spot. They have decided that because they know who they are and what they're doing and they're okay to step into their whole vibe. They have also decided to put that leadership hat on and the responsibilities that come with that. Mm -hmm. They're okay to put their stake in the sand and to say, here is what I'm doing. And maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong sometimes, but that's okay. I'm still going to have the courage to step up, step out and share my thoughts. So that's another really important part. And then the last part is the building. So they all have a platform. And sometimes it changes and it's different, but they have one major place that they're going to, to share their thoughts and opinions and educate and all of those things. And then they're being really smart about how they stack on top of that. They're building their authority, 
not having separate foundations everywhere. Like example, you don't have a podcast that does one thing and talks about one thing and then a blog that has all different content. And then your Instagram is something different. Instead they're stacking. And it's like, here's my one major piece of content, my podcast, for example, then I put it on my blog and I pull, you know, snippets and I bring those conversations into collaborations and refer back to them. That's how it stacks up instead of out. It's a a bigger strategy. So those are the four main points. The one that typically needs some more explanation around it is that alignment. So if you would like me to dive into that, I'd be happy to do that. Oh yes. The frequency, the vibe, the alignment, all of it. It is so, it is the piece I think that brings it all together. It is that piece. Once you get into that connection, that alignment, that centered place. So yes, please talk on that. For sure. (laughs) So when it comes to alignment, I really say that that's like your guiding compass. And I break that down into like four things for you to think about. And so for being in total alignment, the thing that you first need is to know your legacy Mm -hmm. and then your vision, your mission, and your why legacy is the one that people typically don't think of because it's so high level. Mm -hmm. And so I like to just start there first and give more examples there. And then some of the other stuff is more explanatory, but so that legacy is when you think about your life years from now, Mm -hmm. what is that thing that you are here to do to either impart on another generation, pass it down, or maybe it's that you just are going to have a ripple effect for years to come. And so thinking through the way that this honestly came to my mind is we were in the car on the way to the zoo. And we were listening to the song, Weem Away, like in the jungle, the mighty jungle from Lion King. Yeah. So we're about along listening as a family on our way to the zoo. And for whatever reason, my husband and I were like, huh, where did this song come from? So I'm driving, he's Googling. And I don't think I'm exaggerating when this song was written, like and produced a hundred years ago. I just assumed it was like, you know, 98, whenever the Lion King came out. So what happened was, this man who created it was actually a janitor in Africa and he was, he did his work, but then he had the opportunity to go into the studio after he was done. And so he listened to his calling. He went in, he recorded the song. I think a handful of years later, some recording studio in the UK picked it up and then they got, you know, taken from there. And then, you know, the Lion King took it over eventually. Like, But hearing that, what I thought to myself is this man followed his passion. And while we may not attribute this song to him, legacy and authority isn't about that. It's not about attributing and the fame and all of that. It's that ripple effect that you have. And so we're sitting here like a hundred years later, enjoying our time, having a great day because this guy followed his joy. And so that made me think, wow, what am I doing today? That can be that for somebody else a hundred years down the road. Or something else is there's, I know with Kathy Heller, um, we're, we're both from that sphere and she's talked about the man who does the blue zones and he talks about the centenarians. And the one thing that got me in that conversation was there's this man in Sardinia and he is over a hundred years old. And they say, one of the reasons is they last so long is in, in a joyful way is because they have purpose. Mm-hmm. And so for him, he is a winemaker. And he, it's his duty to pass down this winemaking job to the next generation. And so those are kind of the two conversations that come to my mind with legacy is like, have you really thought about that bigger picture of legacy that you're leaving for your family? Yes, of course. But really legacy that you're leaving for the world and the mark that you're leaving on the world, not speaking about fame or anything else. Right. And that is such a powerful way to describe legacy, because when you think of legacy, you do, even for me, I'm going to admit that you're now loud and clear that when I think of legacy, yeah, I think of my children and I think of their children, Mm -hmm. but then it's like, oh my gosh, to start thinking that bigger purpose picture, it is just so expansive. Right. Yeah. Isn't it insane? I mean, the other day we were at a park and my kids were throwing rocks into the water and you could see that ripple. Mm -hmm. And that's, it it just kind of highlighted that even more for me. It's like, you have that initial ring, but then you see how that eventually expands bigger, 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 and just creates more rings. And I think that's really something to, to think about and shift. And then again, that's really what authorities do. Like when we take it back to that level, but being aligned in alignment and knowing that makes making decisions so much easier Mm. because you can look at activities you're doing and think to yourself, Hmm, 
I say, I want to have a legacy of this. I say, I want to do these things. You know, vision, like we mentioned is like that movie, like scene in your head, what's that Pinterest board future. And, and how can we do those actions and live that way today? You know, your mission is what is that core message that you have that, that stake you would put in the ground over for me, empowering mompreneurs to be present and productive is very much my message and, and your why, obviously, why are you doing things? But when you have all of those things together, and I literally have them up on my wall on those huge like post-it note things <laughs> They're like right here so that I can refer back and get myself back onto the right path that I know I want to be on, keep myself in alignment, mm-hmm. but then be better at making my decisions. Does this way that I'm going to speak or this activity I'm going to do, does it support that stuff or is it just a should and uh, mm-hmm. because other people are doing it and it doesn't map back to that? well, then why am I doing it? And I think that's where a lot of minimalism in business comes into play. Yes. It's so true that minimal in business is so important to have your message and that you're always coming back to it. And I love that you say that you have it everywhere. You have to have it front and center of your mind and everything that you're doing, because it is your guiding light, as you said earlier. And I would love for you to talk on the why piece. Cause I also believe that why piece gets you up, gets you moving, gets you going. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I feel like when I put those in the order of legacy, vision, mission, why it's kind of like going from highest level down to like closest to earth, if you will. Mm, yeah. And so where legacy, we're like thinking, you know, hundreds of years from yeah. now, why is more of that, like in this moment. And mm. so for me, the reason that I became a mompreneur, like I mentioned, I'm a third generation mompreneur. And I actually started my first business when I was in high school. I was surrounded by these entrepreneurs saying, do what you love and the money will come. And so I was told I was good at fashion. And so I created, created my business around that. And that was the first one that I had. But really the reason that I did that was because I saw my mom, she was able to be there to pick me up off the bus, to be able to help me with my homework, to be there for all of my games. But then I also watched her doing what she loved and what lit her up. She was present and productive. So in my, you know, 18 year old mind, I thought, well, I'll be really, really productive right now. And then by the time my kids come, I'll be super present, which we can all laugh because that's just not (laughs) not exactly how that plays out. And, And I've grown so much and changed so much, but that's really my why is like, I, mompreneurship is not for the faint of heart. It is not the easiest thing that you could do in life. I believe it is like one of the best options if it's a fit for you, but that is why I choose this path is because it allows me to have that total freedom and live my life exactly as I want and be around for my kids, show them the buffet of options, whether they go into entrepreneurship or not, I'd love for them to know it's an option that they can do life just as they'd like. And so that's really like is just zoning in more on the the personal for you is where I think why comes into play. Do you have you would you want to share your why? I think oh, absolutely. Be- <laughs> I would love to share my why. So yeah, so I was always told your why needs to make you cry. Your why needs to be mm. so deep and so ingrained and so embodied that when you, it comes to your mind, it lights you up on that day that you're having like the hardest day and you're exhausted, you're tired. As a mompreneur, you're exhausted, you're tired. <laughs> and your why brings you up and lifts you up and gets you going. And so when I started listening to myself and what is that? Why? And it's my family. It's that it comes back to that legacy piece again, because I grew up seeing the opposite. I grew up seeing my mom and dad working hard. They, at one point, I think each of them had three jobs at one point to make do. And I was at home, the oldest helping, taking care of my siblings. There's five of us. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that for my future. I don't want that for my, for my son. I, like you said, I want to be there. And I also want to give back to my parents. I want them to be there now for their grandkids because they weren't able to be there for us. And so that lights me up, that sparks me and that gets me out of bed. And so to have a why, and you're saying it brings you to earth because it really, it grounds you. It does. Yeah. 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 Speaking of grounding, I know that was our... (laughs) our spray for the day. But yeah, I think that's a really good point. Like almost if you think about it, you know, like I said, maybe it's a tree or whatever kind of speaks to you or or high above ground. And then, then all the way down to the, to the earth. I think it's, yeah, it's just so interesting and so important because I like to talk more about like soulful strategy. Mm -hmm. I think that there are ways that you can do all of these things and be successful in whatever success looks like to you, but do it really hard. 
And that's just not my MO. Like I've always, the on your terms piece is a very much me. If I am not in alignment with it, I'm, I just, no, thank you. That's Mm -hmm. not, I'm not interested in doing that. And, and if that means I have to find my own way of doing it, then that's what I would rather do so that it's all on my terms. So I think that's so powerful and it's so needed for not just moms, mompreneurs, but for all of us to even be thinking about that authority piece, not just in business, but also in our life to set that priority. But I think sometimes that is so hard, especially for moms. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to that mom? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the prioritizing is, is one thing. And I think the mindset that comes Mm -hmm. behind that you know, thinking through the imposter syndrome and, and all of that self-worth I know comes up a lot for me. Perfectionism is me to a T. And so all of that, yes, can hold us back and make us think, well, why should I be more visible? Why should I do that? Mm -hmm. But I think something that was interesting that I heard on Kathy's podcast actually was, I think it was Jerisha Hawk who said it in, in one of the programs, which is people need your perspective and they want your perspective, not your perfection. And I think something I'm constantly working through is like me, myself, just showing up in the room and holding space is enough. Mm -hmm. And also, like I mentioned, my previous business was, I was a personal stylist for over 10 years. So I talked a lot about signature style and I would always say your style is like your fingerprint. It's Mm -hmm. just unique to you. And I think that I still see that play. I I think that's kind of a universal law, if we will, (laughs) but I, I see that play in here too. Like People need you because people need your signature. Mm -hmm. They need you to show up and by you stepping up and sharing, they get to be seen and feel heard because they can see themselves in you. They need that mirror reflected. So Mm -hmm. if you are feeling overwhelmed by this concept, the biggest thing that I would say is just like find a platform and show up consistently and share your message with grace. I like to take the approach of I'm learning with you. I am trying to be a present and productive mompreneur, just like you are. I am not saying authority. Like I am, you know, the top of the (laughs) top of the hill and you've got to listen to what I say. No, I, I just mean, I'm here to share my message and my thoughts and collect more people like that. And so that would be my thought for you as well. Mm -hmm. You can start off so simple and small. I use love to use Instagram live. And that's a great way for people who like want to do a podcast, but aren't quite ready. It's something today where you can get another guest on hit the live button. You don't have to do anything else. Or maybe you're more of an email person. You can just consistently start sharing your message every week or whatever consistent looks like for you through emails or blog or YouTube. Like there is so many things at our disposal in so many ways. And so figure out what lights you up and what Mm -hmm. feels good when you know your guiding compass and you're ready to show up fully as yourself, then just go share because people need it. People need you. Yes. Yes. To all of that. It is so true. That consistency piece is huge. And then doing what you love, what's bringing you joy. And I love that you said, I'm going to highlight this because I loved it so much that you're in the thick of it with yes. them. I'm not that authority up here. Like I am in there because we teach what we need. Mm-hmm. We teach what we needed. Like for me, that self-acceptance piece, that is what I needed. That was yeah. what little Josie needed so much. And mm-hmm. so I am giving that to her and I'm giving that out. Right. And mm-hmm. so when we have that piece, it is so huge. So I love that you brought that up and I wanted to highlight that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's so important. And I think too, that is like a, an interesting thing because like I said, with authority seeming like kind of an aggressive term, mm. <laughs> it's, it's reminding people the natural part. It's just you showing up as you, and that's all that's needed. Mm-hmm. And that authority piece was huge for me. So I actually went through my training as an embodiment coach. And so I want to share a little bit. It's on my heart to share a little bit about the practice that I did to get into authority, because I used to want to fit in that box. And Mm -hmm. you, like you said, you have to shatter that box. You have to basically obliterate it. And it Mm -hmm. sounds a little scary. And so for an embodiment piece, you have to literally put your body into that authoritative state of like no smile on your face, serious, grounded to the ground, hands in the air, like you are taking up your space and you're just Mm -hmm. in it. And so for the people that are watching, I'm going to do it for you really, really quick a city, but it's a better place to do it. If you are standing up, your feet are grounded, firmly planted, and you are looking straight ahead at your target and you are like serious. And it feels like you said, it feels a little like Oh my gosh, (laughs) when you step into that authority piece, but if you can practice that even for a minute every day, I feel like that gets your headspace into that. Okay. I am 
in charge. Yeah. I am that authority piece. And you don't even have to do it big. Cause even this to me feels like, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> a ready. little bit of practice. Yes, I'm ready. And so I just felt called to sell that. Cause oh my gosh. share yeah. that because you have to almost, you practice and you become that. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that authority piece that we're talking about is huge. And so that's just a little bit of practice. <laughs> I love that. Wait. So when you were trained as a coach, they actually ta- like taught you that and had, oh, had yeah. you do that. Yes. So there is, so an embodiment coaching is all about using the body to get your mind to follow Uh, the body keeps the score. So we can mm -hmm. say all day long, we want this, we want that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And our body's like, but remember when you made that vow that you would never do that because it scared you that one time. And then you start to shriek and then you start to shriek. And so by doing these authority poses, it's teaching your body to be like, I am ready for this. And then your mind follows. Mm -hmm. And so there is, yeah, with embodiment, so many practices that gets you out of your head and into your body so that you can start creating from that place. Yeah. So I love oh that my one. gosh. <laughs> I, my mind is blown. I did not know about that at all. And I think it's so smart. And it just made me think of like, so I'm going to throw a question back to you. Yes. If you can like see visions of your future self, mm-hmm. like example, you can see yourself speaking on a stage and you can kind of see the mannerisms you would have. Mm-hmm. Does it, could it be something like where you kind of act that out every day to get you actually in that space? Does it have to be a certain type of uh, authoritative stance for it to work? Or is it just whatever works for you? For every practice, there's a practice for receiving. There's a practice for authority. Mm-hmm. There's a practice for letting go. I mean, there's a practice in your body for all of it. And so once I think you've developed that practice and you're feeling it and you're taking up your space, then of course you can make it your own. But I love that there is a practice for everything yes. that is um, with the training that I took. There was a practice for everything. And so, and I've noticed a big change. I took this three years ago and that was me staying in my box, staying in my lane. And mm-hmm. I'm just going to play small and be over here and dim my light. And then I find Kathy and she's all take up space. And I'm like, yes, but how? <laughs> <laughs> I will do it. Tell me what arm mo- motion to do. And I'm there. <laughs> Let yes. my body understand it. Yes. And so uh-huh. when I started right after Kathy, that's when I went to the embodiment coaching training and I was just like, okay. And the, uh-huh. after taking that, literally I've been showing up using my voice, being consistent, all the things that you're talking about, but we have to be so compassionate to ourselves on that journey as you were talking about as well. And yeah. it's a, that slow and steady rise to authority. I love that. Oh. That's so interesting to hear about that. <laughs> well, thank you for bringing it up to my mind. Cause I was just like, as you were speaking, I was like, I have to share this. Everybody oh. needs to, needs to hear this a little bit, but back to you. Cause you are the star of the Think oh. Life Fun show today. Yes, you are girl. We're, we're both, I know, I know, but <laughs> yes, we're both in it together. <laughs> yeah, we are, but you are our guest. And so I would love to talk a little bit, to shift the gears a little bit about your mom life, your mom journey, because I think our stores are so powerful and they change lives. So please share a little bit what you feel called to share oh into your God. motherhood journey. Yes. So yeah, I'll give you, yeah, a little bit of the inside scoop on it. So (laughs) we always knew we wanted to have kids and obviously at 18, I'm like creating a business so that I can be a mom. And in high school I was called mom. Like it was kind of always just my calling. That's what my friends would call me because I would take care of everybody to this day. My friend just got married over the weekend and I was her maid of honor. And it's just everybody at the wedding just yelling, mom, mom. (laughs) So this was always what I hoped would end up happening. And so We got pregnant 2018 and then we miscarried and we weren't actually planning. We were, we were going to wait a year Mm -hmm. and that was just kind of the catalyst that we're like, okay, no, we're ready. Like the universe is clearly talking to us and saying we're ready. And so we got pregnant again. We had our amazing son, Jack, and that was May of 2019. And then at about the like six month mark, you know, we had the the typical things after you enter motherhood, I dealt with a little bit of postpartum depression. My husband actually did as well at about the like two, three month mark, which was really interesting to identify. Cause I don't think it, half people don't know that the man can have that. And then, so that was a really interesting thing to navigate. And meanwhile, I'm, I'm running my business through all of this. And then we decided around when Jack was about like nine months old that we were ready to have a second and just two was going to be good for us. So the day the pandemic hit was the day we found out we were pregnant with (sighs) Sophia. (laughs) So now we've got a nine month old at home. My business was all local because it was styling. So it was local styling. And I knew that I was about to like be sick and all of that stuff, just first trimester things. So it was like, it all just happened just as it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. I know that there are a lot of really hard things, obviously that happened through COVID, but I think there were a lot of 
good things that happened too. A lot of this alignment piece came out for so many people. And that was really the journey that I went through it. At that moment, we moved into the house that we're in now. And we just really shifted a lot of our thoughts. And I spent like the whole summer leaning up to Sophia being born. She was born in November, just trying to uncover who am I? Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing this whisper and it started to get louder and louder. I meant to do more and meant to do something different. And what does that even look like? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like when your whole life you're told to do what you love and your mo- the money will come and then you don't know what you love to do anymore. Mm-hmm. Where does that leave you? And so I did a ton of soul searching. She was born. I pivoted into this business and I've just really been looking at things so much differently. Mm-hmm. I mean, between juggling two kids, um, which is just can be a different type of challenge and then just keep leaning back into, I want to be the best mom for myself. Mm -hmm. And when I thought about how my kids would explain what I do for work, my previous business just didn't match that legacy that I Mm -hmm. wanted to leave. And so that was really like the catalyst in my, in my mompreneur journey as Mm -hmm. it it started off with the mom side and then um, sprung into as it does and then flows into the work that you do. Yes. And I love that you're speaking on that soul searching because you have to, you have to find out what do I love now? What interests me now? And we're, it's okay to that, do that involvement to do that, letting go of the old and shedding and into Mm -hmm. the new. And I would love for you to speak on that a little bit because you touched on that mindset piece and Mm -hmm. that piece you have to, you can't, you can't skip it. Nope. It's 99% of everything. And the strategy, no matter how soulful it is, it's really only like 1% of it all. Yeah. So for me, what I did, cause I really didn't know what to do. I didn't know like what to Google to figure out your purpose. And I tried and I, I did some of those exercises that it wasn't getting me to like the meat of, I just wanted to understand. And this is partially my perfectionism as well. I'm working my year for the, my word for the year is surrender. So I'm working on it, but my thing was I wanted to figure out what am I truly meant to do? And so it took a lot of journaling, looking up prompts, listening to podcasts, and then like hearing what they had to say and and journaling on that. I read one book, Ryan Holiday's Stillness is the Key. Mm -hmm. And that really helped me because my whole life has been achievement and go, go, go. And so having to sit still and for the first time in my life, not know what in the world I was doing (laughs) and having no, no guidance in doing that. It was hard. It was hard, but the stillness is something that I try to bring into my life more and more now and talk more about how can I have more space in my day Mm -hmm. and be okay with the stillness. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of the challenges really can come up is because we feel uncomfortable in that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I think it's the key to, to the breakthrough on the other side. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's so true. It's so true. And I love that your word for the year is surrender because that one's a big piece and that one's mm-hmm. a life, like a lifelong. <laughs> yes, I know. I feel like I need to pair. I, I heard somebody say the word the other day, receive. Mm-hmm. And I feel like those two things go hand in hand. And I, I think that I need to pair both of them together as my word for the year slash my life in general. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And that is beautiful too, because yeah, you can be in surrender, but you don't have to be there forever. So mm-hmm. that is so beautiful. And thank you for sharing your mom journey with us. Oh my gosh. And the pandemic. Pandemic and babies, having, man. Yeah. Wow. And I love that you were bringing to to it too, that you were saying the pandemic had, it wasn't all roses, but it had some of that goodness that we could take from it because I think what you look for, you find. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's a, I think that's a really great and poignant point. And I think so much has opened up for us. And I know it's just been, I think an awakening for everybody to go Mm -hmm. back to thinking about that guiding compass and like, what are we, what have we been doing? Have we been running on autopilot for so long? And it was kind of that, like, natural reset in a sense where we all were forced to take the time to look at things differently. And I know that my husband and I now are looking at everything as differently as possible and trying to break all of those traditional systems. And sometimes maybe a traditional system works for us and then sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So for, with our housing situation, for example, we got this house in the middle of the pandemic. It was like, everything opened up for a second and we knew our other house was going to be too small. So we thought, okay, well, traditionally it's a much bigger house than we were in. And it's in the neighborhood with the cul-de-sac and the bigger yard. Mm And so we're like, well, apparently this is what we're supposed to get here. We are two years later now. And we're like, we miss our, our little town. We Mm. 
don't want this much space. We would rather have smaller because we spend too much time cleaning and maintenance and not enough time living in the house and enjoying it. And we're going on adventures now. And, and so that's part of where that grace comes in. But I think that there's also that aspect of like, we're always just learning and and ebbing and flowing. And so we're also thinking too, like, we know we want to downsize. The market isn't an interesting place for selling right now where you can make a good profit. And so we're trying to break that traditional too. And like, okay, we knew this traditional didn't work for us. We know we want my husband to be full-time because we see this life of freedom. So what are all of our options? What's the full buffet? Like, it doesn't have to be that we buy a house. Could we rent? Could we do a tiny home for a little bit? Could we like live with a parent? You know, I think that is a big thing that the pandemic shared with us is there are so many other ways to do things and what works best for you. What works best for you? Beautiful, beautiful question, because it's so true of breaking those norms and making Mm -hmm. it your norms. Like what is normal for me? What feels good? What feels good? And it's the whole buffet. I love that. (laughs) Yeah. And I think it goes back to that, like personality and vibe too, and and leadership of being okay to stand in that. Like we decided for Christmas this year that Santa is like the host of the season and we don't, we didn't want to do as many gifts. We wanted to do more activities and celebrations and like, we have enough things. We don't need things. We need memories. And our family gave us a lot of uh, more of our extended family thought it was crazy. And we're like, giving us a lot of slack for it. And we're okay to stand in. We don't have to do it traditionally. We have to do what works for us. And this is what works for our family. And this is how we, how we want to have it happen. And so I, yeah, I, that grace piece always comes in, but then also again, knowing yourself and being okay with that. Yes. And it comes back to authority. It doesn't just show mm-hmm. up in your business. It ripples effects to all areas of your life. Mm-hmm. It does. So it big. Does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that so much because it's so true when you can stand in your own, everybody around you, they may not see it the way you do, but you can stand in your own and they just meet you where you are. And Mm -hmm. that is our power that we get to take back. Right. Right. And yeah, I think that vibration part of the conversation comes up too. Like when you stand in your own and you're confident and like, this is it, it's like people either follow along or at least most of the time can accept it and respect it versus when you waver or or you lean into all of the other stuff that isn't you. And and then that's Mm -hmm. felt around. I think that's an interesting part of the conversation too. Yeah, it really is. That vibration piece is huge. And like we were talking about Kathy in our sphere, that is what brought me to her. I don't even really know how I found her, but it was like, she was calling to me before I even knew I needed her. And so it's that same thing of like our vibes attracts who mm-hmm. we're working with, who we're around, who we have in our sphere. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, that vibration piece is a huge one. Yeah. And it's a one that it's always a learning. <laughs> yeah. I think, and that's why I think where the mindset piece comes in, like, yeah. cause it's always learning that like, oh, it's okay to just be me. I feel like that's the mm-hmm. common thread all the time is, oh, it's okay to just be me and mm-hmm. do what works for me. Yeah. It's a reminder we need to hit home again and again, again and again. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. So good. So good. This conversation is so good. Thank you I'm- so much for all the things that you're sharing with us and our listeners of Make Life Fun. So the big umbrella of this podcast is that self-acceptance piece. It's huge. And that value piece is huge. And a little bit, a little while ago, you brought up that you're always working on that piece for yourself. And I'm saying, and do you have something on your heart to share a little bit about that self-acceptance, that value, that worthy piece? Mm -hmm. Because we're the only ones I get to say that we are valuable but it's, and it starts with us. And so, yeah, I would love to hear your take on. Yeah. (laughs) I would say I'm a work in progress. (laughs) Like I think a lot of this in the past, like six plus months, I've been doing just a ton of mindset work. And I think I thought that I was in a great space. And then I realized not that I'm in a bad space, but Mm -hmm. just that I have some work to do. Like I've got, I've got a little bit of a fixer upper to work on and just stuff I didn't realize. And I think that self-worth, just me identifying that of, I always just thought, I had self-worth. I've always put myself out there and I've done these things that I know that I can do, but I don't think deep down the root of it, I really understood like the worthiness part, the worthiness, no matter what. Yeah. And so that's what I like literally this morning I did my meditation and I was journaling and I Googled how to like break self-worth from achievement because that is so deeply ingrained in me. And I think that perfectionism, it all just kind of intertwines into this messy little ball. And the big thing on my journey has been figuring out the root. Where did it start? 
So I've recently even asked my parents, like, where did you see me transition into like this perfectionist? Cause they would always tell me in school, don't you got an A, like, that's good. And I'm like, no, but it's not an A plus, you know, (laughs) they were just never those kind of people. So that's been an interesting part of my journey is like, where is the root? And then how can I start to dissolve that and and like accept that and be okay and move on to, to better heights and and more aware heights. So yeah, I would say work in progress. <laughs> and I love it. It's so true. And I love you being so vulnerable and sharing that with us because it's mm-hmm. so true. We have to do the work. Mm-hmm. No one can do it for us. And it starts with getting back to when did this happen? How can I show that grace? How can I show that compassion? And mm-hmm. it sounds like that is what you're doing. And yeah. so kudos to you. That uh, is not easy work, but it is so life-giving. Yeah. Well, I love the word that you had used earlier too of practice. Mm -hmm. I think that that's something that I'm trying to understand more and ingrain is like, I have a meditation practice, but I need to have a mindset practice Mm -hmm. too. You know, how, how can I continue to, I kind of view it. I know people have mentioned like, there's the plaque on your brain, not like literally, but just figuratively of all the stuff that comes up over life. I kind of think of it as barnacles too. And then we get to a point where we're becoming more self-aware. And so now we got to go clean and scrub all that stuff off. And then how can we kind of do it a big, deep cleaning and then just little, little cleanings throughout the time, just like with her teeth or something. So that's been a lot that's on my mind. Yes. And then thinking about it for my kids too, like how can I scrub as much of this stuff off now so that I'm not, you know, generationally passing it on to them and making it so much easier for them by me just being aware, especially yes. with them being little. I feel like now's my time. I got to get it together. <laughs> Yes, yes. And yes to all that, because I think it's so easy for us as moms to say we're doing it. If we do it for the kids, it almost is like that pushing factor. It's like, Mm -hmm. if I'm doing it for the kids, it's for us too. But if we can think in our head, we're doing it for our children to Mm -hmm. help them as much as we can. It is that, again, that why, that motivating factor to get us there. So thank Mm -hmm. you for that vulnerable share, because I know that really is. Yeah. (laughs) And earlier you talked about, you had some questions that people can ask themselves. I would love for you to share those with us so that yeah. the moms listening can start to get in their little journaling and self-discovery for themselves. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing to walk away with this is if you could leave with your guiding compass. So let me kind of reiterate and reframe those four questions. So the first one being for your legacy, you know, what is that ripple effect that thing that you want to share with generations to come, that impact that you want to make on generations to come? What is that kind of core thing? And writing that down first and foremost will help guide a lot of the other things. The second thing for you to start mapping out and thinking through is that vision. And maybe you already have a Pinterest board, but really thinking through what does that future me look like? I'm sure you've seen glimpses of her. Mm -hmm. And so how can you write that down? What are those feelings? And then map towards that today. Just to give you like a quick example on that, in case you're struggling with that journaling point. I have written down that my future self would like to invest in mompreneurs. And while I don't have the capital to do that right now in the way that I would like, I started to have that mindset shift of, okay, if that's the person I say I want to be in the future, how can I be here now? Well, I can choose to shop local and shop small instead of shopping big box. It's still an investment in that woman's business and and shopping mompreneurs and supporting them. It's just not exactly that end vision that I have, but I can still be that person today. So really starting to think through what is that vision and how can you be her today? Your mission, what's your core message? You probably have that mapped out when it comes to your business and maybe that trickles into your life as well. Just mapping that out, writing it down, put this all in one document and end with your why. Why are you doing this crazy life of mompreneurship that we absolutely love? Wouldn't have any other way, but like I said, isn't for the faint of heart. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. It isn't for the faint of heart, but it is so worth it. It is Mm. so worth it. And it is worth going on that journey because in that journey of mompreneurship, entrepreneurship, you find yourself. (laughs) Even if you're not looking. Again and again, (laughs) every day. (laughs) Yeah. So I would love to know how our moms can work with you, how they can support you. Where are you? Yes, for sure. So you can always come to my website, themompreneurguide.com. There you'll find my podcast. You'll see whatever programs I'm working on at the time. I'm working on um, an up-level retreat for mompreneurs who are ready to up-level and step into that space as an authority. So you can check where I'm at in the process of that. I do offer free movement mapping calls. So if you want to get on a call with me and chat and tell 
me what your mission is and your movement. And we can take a look at what authority building activities you're doing now and slot them into my simple stacking system so that you can work smarter and not harder when you're putting yourself out there and being visible. That's a great place to start too. And then I love chatting with amazing women. I know Josie, that's how you and I started to chat was through Instagram. So come follow me over on Instagram at mompreneur guide, and I will send you a DM and we will just start to have an audio message back and forth to each other. Cause I just love to get to know you and see what referrals and things I can send your way. So Yes. So good. Oh, so good. So I always give my guests the floor for the last bit of the podcast of anything that is on your heart after that, this beautiful conversation that we just had, what you're feeling called to share to the mama that is listening to make life fun today. Yes. I would say be you and being you is following your joy every time. The more that you can do that, the more fun you're going to have. And the more we can give ourselves grace, let go of the shoulds and step into who we truly are and being happy with that and okay with that, it'll transform your life. I, I'm doing it and I'm seeing it. And I know that it can be that way for you too. Oh, so powerful and so encouraging. So be encouraged, mama. Thank you so much for listening to make life fun. And thank you so much, Megan, for being here. Thank you. This was a blast. you so much for listening to the make life fun show i hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little little gems little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart that you are not just listening but you're going to do something about it i want you to be fired up so yes so we come once a week come back listen to us here we are an all podcast places you listen we are also on youtube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. (laughs) And we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us. Leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you could connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.